Welcome to the forge, my wanton wildlings. I'm your creepsmith, and I hope you like my work. Hello, wildlings. We all want to think of ourselves as the hero of our own particular narrative. Unfortunately, once we get into the, shall we say, less desirable parts of a story, actually being a hero, it becomes much harder. So says our storyteller in tonight's round two of what I'm calling Three Hollows. And of course, the title is Hollow by Valley Rat. I don't know what's worse, the screams that ended a few weeks ago or the silence that has fallen since then. Before, I felt like everything should be done to help others. Now, in my self-reflection, I don't know anymore. It was like any other day in the city. Sunny, crowded, busy. I was walking to work at a large national bank where I had recently began an internship. I remember that day well because, besides the obvious fact that the world ended on that day, I had finally convinced myself to talk to the cute secretary across the hall from me. Things just seemed to be going my way that day. I walked to work every day in the flow of traffic. Well, that day was straight my way. That's when the alarms sounded. There was a mass panic, as you'd expect. I watched as thousands of people ran in hysteria, all going absolutely nowhere. Some of the people ran for the subways, anything deep underground, but there's only so many places to go, and as I stated before, people weren't getting very far. The only option I really had was to follow all of those going into the subways. There were some military personnel in the corridor instructing us down the tunnel wearing full military gas suits like they were equipped for some sort of bio or air attack. You couldn't see their faces at all and they looked ominous. Some people were crying and the children were screaming as their parents dragged them into the ever darkening tunnel. It must have been a few hours that I walked in darkness with crowds of people before more military personnel dressed in similar attire as described before signaled us to turn left into a behemoth of a vault. The characters N77R2D80F were written across some of the steelwork. I figured I was lucky to have gotten in because I heard gunshots after walking through the metal frames and the large bronze looking doors were shut behind us. More screams could be heard outside, and more gunshots. Then things got quiet outside after a few minutes. The explosions began around 15 minutes later. The sound was deafening and the ground shook like the gods themselves were trying to kill us. The children continued to scream through it all and long after. The thing that disturbed me most wasn't them screaming, it was the lack of noise from outside. Things remained quiet in the vault for the next few days. Uh, people talked about what it was that might have happened on the outside, and the general consensus was that a nuclear explosion had detonated on the surface. It was a miracle that we were still alive, to be honest. There was a small cafeteria for us, but it was obviously overwhelmed by the number of refugees in here. Food rations were fairly small, and seemed to us inhumane, though we all knew there was not enough to go around. It was around the third or fourth day that noises began to again come from outside of the vault. The soldiers were instructed by their superiors not to open the doors for any reason, and I think that we were all thankful for that. None of us wanted to see what was on the other side of those doors, especially now that we heard their pleas. We know you're in there. You have to let us in. Help us. We're dying out here. Do something. For the love of God, help. Their cries went on for around three hours. 
before we heard more gunshots on the other side of the door. I don't want to know where those shots came from, but we were all glad for the quiet after. Then after a week more, the voices came back. This time, they cursed and threatened us all on the inside. They went on to say that once they were inside, they'd eat our flesh and suck the marrow from our bones like from a straw. I tried not to let it get to me, but it didn't work. The voices followed me into my dreams, and they caused me horrible, horrible nightmares. I dreamt that I was on the outside, in the probably leveled city, being chased by subhumans trying to eat me. I know they were just dreams, but I had no idea if that was too far off from reality. Recently, the, uh, the leaders of the vault had all agreed that our rations would be halved. There was protest, and a small faction actually tried to take the cafeteria, but they were all shot. I had begun hoarding the food that I had received in my bag for work. Like I said, there's not a lot, but I stow away what I can when I can. Now they're inside the vault, and they're not human. I caught a glimpse of them as I ran through the corridors, and those things, they're not humans. They have horrible green glowing eyes, and their hairless skin is bright yellow. I locked eyes with one of them, and in that moment, I felt the hatred that he or it felt for me. A step, two steps, and then finally a burst of rounds into his head from his left. I didn't want to stop and greet my savior, I ran. I ran as fast and as hard as I could. You'll probably think me a coward for what I did next, but I don't care. I arrived in the cafeteria and went straight for the kitchen. Breakfast was just being served, so one of the storerooms wasn't locked up and no one was around. I locked the giant door behind me and listened to the carnage outside my door. Uh, shots continued to ring throughout the next couple of hours and then went silent. I spent my time, tried to spend my time taking stock of what food I had and found it was enough to survive for, let's just say, a hell of a long time. A soldier, dead, lay inside near the door with his rifle to his front and his sidearm still bolstered. I grabbed the sidearm and pocketed it. I've been in this room now for longer than I'm able to keep track of. By the amount of cans stacked against the wall, I would guess it's been a month. The corpse in the room began to rot a long time ago, and the stench both from that and my own waste is horrendous. It fills my nostrils day and night. And the worst of it is that they know I'm here. They know that I've locked myself in this room and they keep telling me that I'm gonna die here. That I'm gonna die in this room, in this place. They whisper to me in my sleep that they'll peel my eyelids off of my head and rip my fingers off one by one, and on they go. I spend my days curled up in the corner, watching another person rot, wishing that my hell would end. I've thought to myself so many times that I could just shoot myself in the temple and this nightmare will go away. The food is dwindling and the idea keeps getting more and more tempting. And then those hollow things. They call my name. In my loneliness, I, I told them who I was. They tell me to open the door and it'll all be over. Those hollow, inhuman things tell me to end it. To end the torture on my own terms, they say. Well, 
They got one thing right. Tomorrow, when I wake up, that's what I'm doing. I'm ending it on my terms. Everyone faces hard choices in life. Well, here's hoping that that's one particular choice you never have to make. Stay scary, wildlings. Remember that strength in numbers is a thing. And make the most of your nights. <laughs>